£135 for Umar Namagamedov. Test. One, two. Helen Yee here in Abu Dhabi. Always great to be joined by the one and only Coach Javier Mendez. Always great to see you, especially now we are here in Abu Dhabi. Yes, we're here in Abu Dhabi, uh, my second home. Yeah, it's nice to be here. I know you flew in a few days ago. How was the jet lag? Uh, <laughs> the jet lag actually got me a little bit on this one. So, yeah, it got me. Last time it didn't. This time, yeah, it's not fun. How did it get you this time and not last time? Did you not sleep on the plane? No, I don't never get to really sleep on the plane. I have a hard time sleeping on planes, even with sleeping pills. Um, but for whatever reason, I don't know. It, it got me uh, sometimes. One of them lasted almost a whole month with my sleep pattern being off. Uh, this one here, it's not bad, but it, 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 it's, it's uh, people that get it know it. <laughs> like the schmo knows. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he got jet lagged. I got jet lag. I was in bed for, I think, 20 hours yesterday. It hurt pretty bad. Yeah, I slept the other day about 13 hours straight. <laughs> you know, I, that was kind of messed up, yeah. So you can imagine how fighters are and how they feel when they come here, that what they have to deal with. Nobody understands what a fighter goes through till you hear uh, the word jet lag. You go, what is jet lag? And, you know, as a fan, you're thinking, that's oh, not that big deal. Till you get it, then you go, wow, how do those guys perform like that? Yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah. you don't even know what day it is. Your head's, like, glued to the yeah, bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, that's why Team Habib, we always, when we're knowing we're going to a place that's going to give us jet lag, we're always at least two weeks early. That's at nice. least two weeks. Yeah. But you got to be able to afford it. It's not that easy. Most yeah. camps can't. Well, did you drink your coffee today? No, I didn't drink my coffee. I haven't been drinking too much coffee. And, and uh, uh, sometimes I feel I need it really bad. But lately, uh, the last... Two weeks, I haven't been drinking coffee, and actually, I'm doing a little bit better health-wise. Oh, that's yeah, I feel a little better. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe coffee's not good for me. Wait, what made you cut out the coffee? I did it by accident, and all of a sudden, I just started noticing I'm feeling a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. Maybe maybe I should have something done, checked or something, because oh. the coffee may not be my best friend. Wow. I drank two cups today. But, um, yeah, maybe I, I should just cut it out just to see if I feel better. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, it's supposed to be good for you, really. I mean, to some degree, but it's supposed to be bad for you, too, for some people. So maybe I'm one of those guys that uh, doesn't do too well for me. Well, you're looking good, looking strong. Last time I know we were talking about working out, and yeah. I see you've been working out hard. I've been working out. I've been staying on on my fitness. I, I, I did get on Manjaro to originally kickstarted without manjaro i would have never lost the weight i, I lost like 35 pounds wow. but it was all originally due to manjaro you know and now i'm more i'm not on it no more but i'm working out and, and i'm continuously working out so that was the key so you know don't think i'm that bunch of a guy that has great willpower no i i needed to cheat <laughs> Well, congratulations. I mean, it's paying off. Did you and Habib have your leg press competition yet? I saw on your Instagram, you've been doing some bench presses. Hey, you're looking strong. That was a few years back and, and, and uh, Habib was benching and I said, I could do that. He goes, no, 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 coach, don't do this. I go, what are you talking about? I could do this. So I, I repped it, I don't know, 30 times or something like that. And he was looking at me like, what? Coach, no, no, stop, stop. It's okay, it's okay. You know, but I, I'm fairly strong, you know, when it comes to upper body and stuff. So I didn't think he knew that. <laughs> Did he try to challenge you in that? No, he oh. he knows he can't beat me there. He uh, he did challenge me to the, to a leg workout. He said, "Coach, I can beat you on legs." I go, "Oh, really? Okay." So then we tried it, and he went in to do the leg push, and then he stopped, like he pulled the fast one on me. He just made me think he was going to compete with me, and he did it. He just, oh, "I'm done." He walked off. I'm like, oh. "So we yet to see if he's got stronger legs than me." I don't think he does. And it's the leg press machine. Yes, the leg press machine. Yeah, he doesn't like that one. So you're undefeated against Habib in the leg press machine. Yeah, I'm undefeated because he didn't challenge me. But on the weight, I'm undefeated too. Yeah, and for those who haven't seen his bench press video, you're bench pressing, what, 500 pounds? 
Yeah, I'm bench pressing like more like 550. <laughs> no, no, we did not do our leg press competition. I think he's afraid he's running for me. He didn't even want to send me location. So I know, Habib, send me location, leg press. <laughs> Some location, but we all know the location which Umar will be fighting obviously this weekend. A lot of his fans are super excited for his number one contender fight against Corey Sanhagen. He weighed in this morning just a few hours ago at championship weight 135. Yeah, no, I saw it. I, I never go to the weigh ins, I never really go to the weight cuts. I, I'm kind of like the old papa bear. They they kind of let me do a lot of what I want. You know, Habib is more the leader. He he runs everything just like his father did. And I come in and I do my little bits in here, a little bit there. And for the most part, you know, I do I do what I've been always doing. You know, I come in, I do my thing. And Habib, in all honesty, has always been coaching these guys, even when he was fighting. So the only difference this time around for Umar is now he gets to have the great one in his corner also. So having him in the corner with me is fantastic uh my only my only thing when he quarters is he's gonna go crazy he's gonna go up he's gonna, ah! and it's like, so i say calm down calm down like always i'm gonna do that but but it's so great to have him in the corner and to watch him coach these guys uh he's just uh, very gifted in so many areas and he has passion and, and he wants to be there for for certain people so he's always going to be cornering for certain people because he had told me when he originally went away from coaching in the corner in the corner he never went away from coaching just corner work he said that he he needs to spend time with his kids but but now i said well you at least consider maybe coming once in a while for certain people yeah. and he goes he'll think about it and i guess he thought of over a year about it and then he decided that he'll come out and he came out with the islam's fight and now he's going to be with umar and he's going to be with me with uzman's fight in, uh, in uh, September. So we're going after this, we're going to uh, uh, San Jose to train for Usman's fight. Well, busy schedule ahead, but I know the fans love kind of watching his passion in the corner, even though I know you told me last time that you kind of had to give him some advice, right? Yeah, I had to say, hey, you know, you don't have to... Sp you know, scream so much and stand up. I do some bit, you know, just be selective as when you scream because when the crowd's going crazy, and, and, and you're going crazy, he's not hearing you. Yeah. So wait to, to get in, you know, you know, pay those little tiny, those are little tiny things that I give him, little things like that. You know, everything else he, he has. His instruction is great. I mean, he even demonstrates the, the, the striking techniques to perfection now. He knows, he knows, Habib knows. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, looking at Umar's fight, I did see Daniel Cormier kind of talk about Umar versus Corey, and he even said that Umar's like an upgraded version of Habib and Islam. What do you make of that? He's not too far off. Yeah. I mean, he kind of is an upgrade version of both those guys. He's great grappling. He's, he's good at uh, takedowns. I mean, he's, he's, he's as, as striking as, as a is actually better than both of those guys, but he just needs a little bit more areas to be wander up. So he kind of, in a way, is headed in that direction. You know, for me, Islam is 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 uh, the the most well-rounded uh, lightweight champion champion of all time, yeah. and uh, Umar is probably on track for being that in the bantamweight division. I mean, he's probably maybe there now as far as well-rounded. You know, he might be there. I'm not, I have to really look and see who all the players are. So I really can't make that assumption just yet because, you know, if I say all time, I'm looking at uh, Demetrius and I'm going, ah, Demetrius is pretty damn good yeah. all the way around. So I'm not making that, uh, you know, I'm not making that judgment yet. But wait a minute, Demetrius is a flyweight. Yeah. Oh, so, okay. So <laughs> maybe I have to relook at that and then I'll see. Then when I see that he is, I'll make that, uh, you know, prediction that he is. But right now I can't look at that like that. Well, with the title shot kind of on the line, what are you expecting to see from Umar in his fight against Corey? Well, I'm expecting Umar to go out and do what he did in sparring. I'm expecting him to go out and do what Habib and I instruct him to do, and I expect a total domination. And again, I'm not looking for any finish. I'm looking for five rounds because as a coach, I have to be engaged every second, every minute, you know, every round. And I don't want to lose track. But let's like, say I look this way and all of a sudden something big wreck happens. Just just like you look at anywhere else. If you're driving in your car and you lose concentration on where you're driving to, you look one way, you look down, or you drop your makeup or something, next thing you know you're in an accident. I kind of look at it the same way, you know. So you, you can't 
distract yourself from what's in front of you because you might miss something. Then you might see the opponent being trying to set up your fighter and you got to warn your fighter what might be in the horizon or what opportunity presents itself. So you got to be careful. So that's why I'm always laser focused when I'm in the corner. And I'm not nervous. I'm just focused because I know what I need to do. And I've been there so many times that the nerves, like even last night, I slept no problem as far as sleeping without the fight being on my mind. But before, oh, it was hell trying to sleep with, you know, your fighter having to fight. It was, it was not fun. Well, I know Islam's also here. So how's Islam doing? And will we see him kind of in the corner as well? Uh, from what I know, I, we won't be seeing Islam in the corner from what I know. Uh, but uh, that wouldn't be a bad idea either. He's a great corner also. He's, you know, and he, he's he's definitely, you know, the best pound for pound fighter in the world. And, and, and he's their brother. So, so it would be great to have Islam in the corner. But I, I don't think it's, it's in the cards for him to be in the corner. Okay. Well, how is he doing? Because I believe he spoke to media recently saying that he has a hand injury and it'll kind of force him out for a few months. Yes, he's got a ligament uh, injury and uh, he's, you know, looking for consultation, not looking. He's getting consultation from different doctors and uh, we'll see what uh, what they say he has to do. But yeah, no, he's not going to be able to train to uh, you know, for a fight, so probably late December, November, or maybe January. I don't know. Depends what the UFC and them uh, can come up with, but he's definitely not going to be ready to fight, uh, you know, in October, like people are hoping. But it would be the Armand rematch that would be next, or? I would think it would be the Armand rematch because I don't see anything else on the horizon, you know, being the Palau you know, when, when the welterweight title, I seriously, seriously doubt that they would want to fight each other now. So I think that changes the dynamics of going for a tooth belt situation. But uh, I think Armin was on point uh, task, you know, as far as the next opponent anyway. So uh, that's the fight I would want to happen anyways. Well, you bring up Bilal and also Habib's great coaching. I know leading into the fight, Bilal did mention the fact that Habib kind of helped him break down his fight against Leon. Now he's Anu, the champ. Yeah, you know, Habib did help, you know, and he spent some time with Habib. Habib, did, Habib took special interest in Bilal. Um, but, you know, a lot of people are forgetting the narrative, you know, of his great coaches like that he has with him, you know, and, and uh, you know, Mike Valley and, and Lou. Lou has been with them for a long time and they're great coaches. And uh, my feeling is uh, more attention needs to be on the, on the great coaching that they did with him versus, you know, Habib coming in because Habib did play a, a small role in this. He did show him certain things. He did give him confidence. But it was his coaches that have been with him his you know whole fighting career, and uh, you know Mike Valley and, and Lou need need their their their, their you know, creds too. I love that you're always such a class act and always showing love to the amazing coaches out there, and especially Bilal's. But what did you make of his fight and dominant victory over Leon? Well, unfortunately, <laughs> I didn't see it, but uh, I was very very happy for him because you know. He, from the very beginning, it was Palestine all the way. He always, uh, in I think 2017, New York, first time I seen him walking around New York, Times Square, and he's got the Palestine flag wrapped around him. 2017. So this man has been pro-Palestine since I've seen him. So probably his whole life, you know, he's a very proud man. And, you know, it's like he said, it really touched me when he said the, the real fight is the people. This is nothing. They're doing. They're the real fighters, and you know he's right. He's 100 percent right. They're the real fighters, and and he's pro them, and and the, he gave them a great victory. You know, something for them to look for, at least some something to grasp on to say there's still hope for us. You know, and uh, hopefully, you know, the worlds get together and and they say, hey, you know, humanitarian, you know, decency for kids. You know, of, of any country, any religion is what's most important. And, and children should always be safe. Yeah, very well said. But for your fans who love you and can't wait to tune in to watch Umar's fight against Corey Sanhagen, what would you like to let them know? I would like to let you guys know that uh, Young Eagle has uh, arrived. And uh, I've always known he was going to arrive. Now the whole world will know he's arrived. And he's going to give a great performance um, because that's all he's made to do. And he's following Father's Plan's legacy.